Our third neurotype uh, is the neurotype 2A. Uh, neurotype 2A is the first of the muscle dominant neurotype. We have two muscle dominant neurotype. Now, the 2A is, I, I would say, about half and half muscle dominant and neuro dominant. So, you'll get what I mean when, when I, I tell you the sentence that describes how they should train. Now, the one word that describes them is uh, variation. So the most important element, either in training or in their life, is variation. They always need to do something different, otherwise they lose motivation. Now the sentence that best describes how you plan the training for these people is, everything works, but nothing works for a long time. So when you are a coach and you're working uh, with different clients, the type 2A is the type that is the easiest to work with because as I just mentioned, everything works. Uh, you can put them on an explosive training program, you can put them on a bodybuilding program, on a part of thing program. Everything will work, but nothing will work for more than two or three weeks. Uh, that is my own neurotype. That's why if in the past you've read my articles, you know that, for example, uh, like in 2014, I was, like for four months, rambling about like, how bodybuilding training is great, the mind-muscle connection, how to isolate and anything like that. Then a few months later, I'm all about, well, it's all big compound movement. You should try to accelerate as much as possible, not going to failure, da 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 And then a few months later, I'm talking about the Olympic lifts, then I'm talking about maximal effort method. And, and you, people got confused, so, well, Christian always changes his mind. What gives? Well, it's because I'm a 2A. So when I'm really into one type of training, I really am focusing only on that nothing else exists. But once I understand that type of training and it has no novelty anymore, then I will look for something different. And of course, I will only write about what, pa uh, what I'm passionate about. So, so I will only write about what I'm doing at the moment. Now, that's type 2A. You can compare that to a buffet. They need a buffet of training. And ideally, at every session. So the one word that describes them is variation. Now, variation within the session, variation between the training days, so in a week, and variation in a training block, and most importantly, variation from the block to block. So that means that ideally, they should have a neurological component, and a muscular component at every training session. I'm gonna give you an example of my own training. So this morning what I did was, I did a max effort lift. Uh, this morning was bench press from pins. So that's a typically, uh, that's an overload method from a dead start, so it's pure neurological method, ramping up to a one RM, so that you can't get more neurodominant than that. Then afterwards, I had one heavy lift in a four to six rep range, so again, pretty much neurodominant with a small muscular component. Then I did some bodybuilding work at the end, so I got the muscular component. That was a very satisfying training method for me. Uh, so that neurotype, ideally, you would have both muscle work and neuro work. Two reasons. The, the first reason is that they need variation. But the second reason is, right, I mentioned that in the, in the previous capsule, the, the component you are dominant in recovers faster than the other ones. So for example, type, 2A, type 1A is pure neurodominant. So if it's pure neurodominant, it means that anything neural you can recover super fast from. I'm gonna give you an example, uh, like Bulgarian Olympic weightlifters, they are normally type 1A, and as such, they can max out on the snatch and clean and jerk pretty much every day, and they recover from it. Personally, if I do that, in four days, I wanna cry running back home. Uh, that's because my, my neuro component is good, but not good enough to sustain what the 1A can sustain. So if you look at the 2A, the 2A, the neuro and muscular component are both pretty good, but they, none of them is super high which means that I cannot tolerate the same volume of neuro work as a 1A and a 1B, and I cannot sustain the same amount of muscle work as the 2B, which is pure muscle dominant. But I can do a lot of work 
if I have both. So I cannot do a lot of neurodominant work, nor can I do a lot of muscle work in a session. But if I have a decent amount of both, my volume can be good because both systems will recover individually. So that's why the 2A can actually handle the most volume of all neurotype if you have a blend of new and muscle dominant. Now, as far as what are the best training methods, well, all of them works, really. So it's very easy. Any kind of training tool you want to throw them their way, it will work. Uh, they are particularly uh, likely to like, respond well to cool training tools, specialty bars, chains, bands, uh, weight releasers, prowler, all that kind of stuff. Anything that looks new. Uh, and because they need, they like, they like variation. Now, regarding chains and bands, like the first three neurotypes that I just covered can work with chains and bands, but need to use them differently. Type 1A, remember type 1A that I covered earlier, type 1A is slow gear strength. So when they are using chains and bands, it is purely for accommodating resistance. They want maximal load at every point in the range of motion because they are pushing like that. So for them, chains and bands, type 1A. Lots of barbell weight, low chain, and low band resistance. If you look at the 1B, the 1B is built to create momentum. They produce force by creating acceleration. So they need to have a lighter load at the beginning to be able to use that acceleration to create momentum, and then having a much higher weight at the end to slow them down so that they can try to keep pushing instead of decelerating, maximizing acceleration. So if I'm a type 1B, I want to use less barbell weight and more chains and bands resistance. If I'm a 2A, both works. As I mentioned, 2A, everything works, but nothing works for a long time. They can do a lot of volume, but not a lot of volume of one thing. They can't do a lot of volume of muscle work. They can't do a lot of volume of neuro work. They can do a lot of volume by combining both in a session, but not a lot of each of them. So that is the introduction. Of course, there's a lot more to it than that, but that's the introduction to the type 2A.